The Washington Post reports that 55 of the largest companies here in the U.S. paid zero federal income tax on more than $40 billion in profit last year. Those companies include Nike, FedEx, Dish Network, and more, according to that analysis. Amazing. So not only did these large companies skip out on taxes, the government actually gave them $3 billion <laughs> in rebates. Editor-in-chief at The Real News, host of the Working People podcast, Max Alvarez, senior congressional correspondent for The Daily Caller, Henry Rogers, join us now to discuss. All of this, Max, comes in the midst of a big fight here in Washington over the corporate tax rate. The Chamber of Commerce is going all out saying we are not going to raise this from 21 to 28. Joe Manchin says, whoa, 28, that's way too high. Maybe I could do 25. When the truth is, is that it doesn't matter because the actual effective tax rate is zero for all of the people of whom it would be most applicable to and doesn't raise any revenue whatsoever. My favorite part is that we actually had to pay them $3 billion right. in rebates yeah. over the last several years. Go ahead, Max, you first. Right, yeah, I mean, you know, just look at, you know, uh, uh, you know, people, f I think, rightly freak out about the fact that Amazon, you know, pays pays diddly squat when when Amazon makes so much money and people are asking how is that possible like you said it gets worse we're they're not only not paying nothing we're paying them and that's <laughs> not and that's not, that's on the back end right we're not even talking about all the kind of tax incentives and 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 uh, social resources that are pulled to kind of incentivize uh, Amazon to build uh, in certain places remember the mm. circus we had when Amazon was uh, uh, basically trying to get every city in America to dance for them and and give up more uh, you know of their tax base give up but more of their infrastructural control uh, to incentivize Amazon to build a new, you know, headquarters there and stuff like that, right? There's so many ways that like uh, these corporations are just sucking, you know, the the lifeblood out of our society, and we're helping them. Our politicians have been helping them for decades, right? I think that one thing that I'm I'm interested to see kind of unfold in our current moment, right? Is that people have been waking up to the fact that um, this is a failed social experiment, right? The 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 underpinnings of whatever you want to call it, whether it's Reaganism, whether it's trickle down economics, it we have seen enough evidence to see that it failed, right? Because we keep giving corporations more money and they do not pour that money back into the economy the, that in a way that would benefit us. And we see that time and time again. And I think people, especially after being hammered by a pandemic, are finally sick of it. Yeah, yeah I think you know, right. your your comment about the Amazon headquarters, I think, is actually really important because that's a case where, look, they're going to put their headquarters somewhere. So you're not on net creating any more jobs. Those jobs are going to be somewhere. You're just creating this zero sum game and competition between cities and states of who can throw themselves the hardest and give away the most to Amazon in order to lure them to come to your town. Um, Henry, I already know the answer to this, but I'm going to ask it anyway. Republicans have, as of late, especially with regards to Georgia, they've been feigning this sort of like anti-corporate aesthetic. Is that ever going to change the way that they view things like tax policy and the other economic policy landscape type of items that have created so much power, social, cultural and otherwise for these corporations in America? Uh, I mean, it should. I don't know if it will. I think, you know, the, the MLB situation is one of you know, it's 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 bigger than uh, it, it's just political is what it truly really is. So mm -hmm. so that's one thing. The corporations, they, they need to be held accountable. And I don't know at what point uh, the lawmakers are going to start coming in here and doing things. I mean, we have people like Josh Hawley and, you know, Elizabeth Warren and others have been speaking about this for years. But We've seen nothing really been done on this front. I mean, these people continue to make more and more and more money, mm. and we continue to provide them with more money. So it just makes no sense. I mean, they need to pay, they pay their fair share, and at what point will it happen? Uh, it should be soon. So it's interesting, Max, because, yes, you know, on the Democratic side, there obviously is a marginally more interest in raising corporate taxes. But again, as we've been discussing here, which is that if you want to really go and tax some of these gains, you have to enter the financial system. There's just simply no other way. There's literally trillions of dollars flowing untaxed, unregulated, and more, which is being leveraged and used for ridiculous purposes, as we recently saw with the Viacom stock. Why is it that we just can't? I mean, there is no appetite in either party. There are maybe three lawmakers in the entire body of the Senate, maybe like nine in the House, who would even be willing to have this type of conversation. Yeah, I mean, I think it's the kind of conversation that, um, you know, 
like with a lot of things, right? With the the pandemic uh, related um, stimulus checks, mm -hmm. like with kind of things like the infrastructure bill, right? There's going to have to be uh, more of a popular swell to push on this issue, um, and and for people to uh, identify this as a key issue for solving the social problems that we're all facing. The problem is, is that this financial system has been, you know, carefully crafted to be immaterial and almost entirely unreal to the average working person, yeah. right? Even if you have a pension, like maybe your pension is like the one sort of vehicle through which you can start to understand um, finance capital. But even then, so much of it is happening over our heads, even though so much of it depends on our collective exploitation, right? You know, you, you, one way that I try to kind of talk to folks about this is, you know, just right now, right, when we, we're talking a week after uh, coal miners in Alabama went on strike uh, mm -hmm. against Warrior Met Coal, right? And one, the reason I bring that up is because these coal miners sacrificed and tightened their belts in 2015 and 2016 when their parent company went bankrupt, the company that was then bought by Warrior Met Coal. Warrior Met Coal made over $300 million before the pandemic, and what they're trying to do is stiff workers even more, get workers to um, concede even more uh, when it comes to their pensions and their pay so that they can kind of pay back uh, you know, their shareholders, just like GM did when it had its workers tighten their belts in the financial crash in 2008, GM told workers that it would pay them back when it was back in the black. And then what happened? They became profitable. They did mass layoffs. They closed plants in Ohio and they, they focused on paying back their shareholders, right? Mm -hmm. That is how kind of this financial system is connected to the material reality of our daily lives. But we don't make that explicit enough. I mean, working people feel it for sure, right? right. But I think that that's, if we want to kind of have a, 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 a political messaging that, that is um, effective, right, we need to kind of tie it to those kind of lived realities that show that the dominance of finance capital in this country does translate to the misery that we experience every day. That's a yeah, really so good things point. aren't really just framed as like, oh, this is a pay for, right? This yeah. is how we make this deficit neutral. It's like, no, no, the taxes are the point themselves. <laughs> right. There's an inherent good in knocking down these wealthy individuals, wealthy corporations, a peg to rebalance the economy, but you very rarely hear that kind of rhetoric coming out of Washington. That's right. Um, gentlemen, so great to have both of you. Thank you for your insights. Thanks, gents. Thanks for having me. Thank you, guys. More rising for you after this.